Hey y'all, Shelly with Bossy Chick Designs was just coming on today to show y'all how I did the design for the thin blue line acrylic that I made. Um, excuse the mess behind me, we are still in the middle of remodeling so I had to squeeze into what my mom calls the costume room and I hadn't been around much lately because last month in April my mom fell, hit her head, so she's been in the hospital with a head bleed for almost a month now. She's improving, but it's still going to be a little bit. She's in rehab right now, so it's going to be hit or miss with videos when I'm off because when I'm off, I've been going to Baton Rouge to go visit with her. So I will squeeze videos in as I can, and if anybody has any suggestions of something that you're interested in seeing, I'll attempt to do that. But give me a sec, and I will transition over to my computer. Okay, so for my particular badge reels, I generally use either um, the 2-inch circle or a 1.5-inch circle. So for the Thin Blue Line one, I used a 2-inch circle, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and set up here. So I'm going to click up here on Shapes. I'm going to pick a circle, and it defaults to a 2 by 2 inch so that's what I want. So I'm going to use that as my reference. And most of my designs, I always want an edge to show on my acrylic. So I'm going to add a second circle. And I'm going to just change this to white just where I can see the contrast. This particular circle is going to be the design. So I generally change mine to 1.95 inches. And then that way, when you highlight both of them and align them to center, do you see that there's a little bit of a black rim as a border? That's what I want when I do my designs. That way, there's some of the epoxy or UV resin, whichever you prefer. I generally use UV on my badge reels. Um, that way it kind of grabs the edge because I know some people say that theirs sometimes peels off if it's fully covered in just vinyl. I have not had that issue, um, but that's what most people suggest. So that's kind of what I've just been doing. So I'm going to use this white one to slice my design out of. So I'm going to come to Upload. And I'm going to go to view all. So this shows all the designs that I've uploaded into um, my Cricut. And I'm going to type blue just because I know that a design that I previously uploaded for the flag. And this one's the one that I'm going to use because I want the one with the solid area here. Not the one that's already got the blue line. I want this one. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to go to the bottom down here. And I'm going to tell it to add it to canvas. And then I am going to take this and just come up here to the size. And I guess I'll just do four inches. That way it just kind of gets me in the ballpark of what I want. And then I'm going to come onto my circle and I'm going to right click. And I'm going to tell it, bring it to the front because I want it on top just to where I can kind of see. And then I'm going to click on my flag and I'm going to size my flag down. Okay. So I like about that size. So I'm going to take the flag now and I'm going to bring it up to the front. Right click, tell it bring to front. And then that way I can kind of see where exactly my design is. So I'm going to scooch this over just a little bit. Because this is the edge here for your circle. I can't touch my screen too much because mine is a touch screen computer. So it looks like mine comes over this way. So I'm going to catch a little bit of the flag with the stars here. So that's what I want. So I'm going to left click, highlight both of them. Because what I want to do is I'm going to come down here and click on slice. That way it cuts the circle out of the flag. So see, the circle's there. So I'm going to move this one. This is one of them that I want to use. And then I'm going to come and just X this one out. I don't need this one anymore. So this is one design that I don't need either because I'm going to ultimately want this area here on this one that's solid because I'm going to clip the blue line out. So I can get rid of that one. So I'm going to come back over here to shapes again. 
and square, rectangle, whatever, doesn't really matter what you pick. I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to unlock the sizing because I want to be able to adjust it freely. And then I'm going to shrink it and just drag it farther than what my design is here. So I want it a little bit thinner. And then you can position it however you prefer it, however much you want to show. And then kind of get it lined up the way you like. I guess let me zoom in a little bit more. And then I'm going to left click, highlight both of them. And then I'm going to come back down here to slice and I'm going to slice away the extra here. So this I can delete. That's my keeper there. And then it's still going to create extra also. So I don't need either one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and delete both of these. So I'll just kind of show you this. I'm going to turn to blue. And then when you line up your design, there's your blue line. So this one I can hide. I generally hide my little guide, I guess. I think I read something the other day when my Cricut updated that there's a way to mark it as a guide or something. But I haven't played much with Cricut since um, I got on it yesterday was the first time I got on it since the last update and I haven't really looked at it yet. So I'm going to come hide this one. That way it doesn't cut that circle. I just want these two cut. Lots of times when I do my designs for preference and I would suggest saving as you go here and there. So I don't need to save mine because I already have this design but click save. Type in however you want to save it as and you can save it. Um, cause I know my Cricut sometimes if I'm doing a design that has a lot of images, it freezes up and kicks me out just all of a sudden. And I know that it's done it before and I've been able to open it back where I started. But the last couple times when I was doing, um, the little baby closet dividers, um, yeah, I worked on it for several hours, forgot to save it. And when it shut down it did not reopen where I was working. So I have learned just to generally click save every so often while I'm working on something. So when I cut my designs, if it's not a design that is very detailed or a whole lot of stuff, I will generally put all my stuff to one color. And I generally go a lighter color because it's easier for me to see it on the mat. Um, than black because black I kind of have an issue seeing where the little pieces and parts all are on it. So I'll highlight it, change both of them to the same color, and I use a single mat when I do it. Um, you're more than welcome to do multiple mats, but this is just what I prefer to save time. And then click up here in the corner. We're going to click on make it. And then see it comes up with both pieces. So I'm going to position mine one on one corner, one on the other, and I will find some, I use a lot of scraps. So let me come dig in my little scrap bin and then I will come and reposition and set up my mat. So give me just a second guys. All right guys, so this is a brand new mat. If you have one that's not as sticky in some areas, you can change where you position it and like I said this one's brand new so normally what I'll do is how it's got the inches up here on these sides where it's got the little centimeter mark and I'll actually mark mine with the numbers one two three through eleven on the side on each side just to where no matter which way I use it I know where I'm positioning stuff but in this particular one since it is a new mat I'm just going to be able to put it in the corners so I will just match the design that I see on the computer to what I have here. So I'm gonna take the black and put it over here in this corner. Press it down and then the blue is going to go over here. All right. So and then come over here, put it in. Make sure that it's in the little clips on each side because I have cracked rollers, um, cracked mats when it gets caught because I 
didn't put it underneath the lip here and it ended up kind of getting jammed. And then we're gonna hit the button here to load it. And then when I come over here, I'm gonna tell it to continue. Sorry guys, I really need a better setup, but until I'm back in my craft room, I don't have a whole lot. And then I'm going to tell it vinyl and I leave my default pressure the same. So now it's telling me that I already loaded it. I can press go. So then I'm gonna come over here. Doop. And this blinks when it's ready to go. So I'm gonna click on that. And then it's going to make sure everything's set up and then it's gonna go to town cutting. So at this particular design, the little stars, I think, are by far the smallest part of the design. Um, you can alter it as you like to make them a little bit bigger. But it's all about your preference. And then if anyone's interested in seeing a tutorial on um, the baby closet organizers, I can always do one on that too. I don't know how many people are actually interested in doing something like that, but I've done a couple sets already and they were fun. They're very cute. Okay, so it's done. So you come back over here, hit your button here to unload it. All right. And then just give me a sec. I'm going to set up and then I will show y'all generally how I weed. I know my desk is a mess. Hang on. All right. So that's my design. I just trimmed it to where it's not as much excess because, of course, I'm a hoarder when it comes to vinyl because I will keep every little scrap unless, like, it's really small. So this is going to be the blue line part. So I just come in peel that off and then I know I did have a um, a pin pen there for a while which worked really good I generally just stick it to the vinyl that's in my hand. I don't have any particular holder or anything. I did have a little um, holder that I used for a while, but I don't find that it worked any better than anything else. I'll just generally stick it to vinyl that's sticky. Yeah, so I don't I don't know where my little pin pen went to. Um, my stuff's all over the house. I have super glue somewhere, as I bought a whole bunch of super glue, um, the Loctite gel control. I have twelve bottles of that sitting somewhere in this house right now. But I guess until this remodel's done which hopefully will start soon. My cabinets were delivered last month.
All right, so that is that weed. And I'm gonna come get my little stars that kind of jumped around there. All right. So let me get some transfer tape. I'm not gonna put this on acrylic. If you wanna see how to do that, you're more than welcome to check out my previous video. Um, I'm just gonna come over here and cut a little bit of transfer tape here. So for this particular one, I'm going to try and center this a little bit more kind of in the middle just to kind of show you. Um, there is a nifty little trick. Let me go see if I can find some parchment paper to where I can show y'all or wax paper, whichever one. So I'm going to sticker this down here. I'm going to peel this off. I'm going to throw this on my bigger piece right now. Give me just a sec. Let me go see if I can find some wax paper. Okay, so I did not find wax paper, but I did find some parchment paper. Um, I saw this really neat trick on kind of aligning stuff with um, layering that you can use parchment paper. So I will take my design and I will generally leave a little bit of my design to where I can stick it to whatever layers underneath, but I don't want anything else sticking down until I'm ready for it. And then try to zoom in a little bit better. Hang on guys, let me see. So I will come line up. See in this particular one, you can kind of see it because it's so dark. You can kind of line it up before the final position to see where you want it exactly. So I want it to go over a little bit more. So I can see that it's not exactly even. So you can take it in pull it up and then reposition and you didn't mess anything up. I thought that was like the coolest little trick for it. And then when you're ready, you can stick part of it down and then I peel this way and I'll grab the edge and I'll push from this way. And you can either use one of your tools or I'm just using my finger since it's easier. So it is lined up and it didn't stick and there's really no air bubbles since I was able to get it positioned. And then I'm actually just going to go ahead and peel it off of this part. Oh, hey, look, I actually do have a squeegee. And then since I don't really have anything to stick it on right now, I am just going to take it and stick it back on this piece until I am ready to use it. So that's the thin blue line layered. And that was a nifty little trick with parchment paper or wax paper. Wax paper is a little bit easier to see through, but your vinyl sticks a lot more to the wax paper than it does parchment paper. So it's total preference and what you have on hand. I tend to use parchment paper. So I hope y'all enjoyed that video. That's a quick one. Um, if there's anything else y'all wanna see, let me know, like, share, subscribe, and I'll figure out another tutorial for another day. Thanks guys.